Thank you for joining us for our monthly webinar series from Local Market Monitor, where we take a closer look at this month's National Economic Outlook, which was written by Local Market Monitor's President Ingo Windsor. For those of you that don't know Ingo, he has been analyzing real estate markets for over 30 years and is a graduate of MIT and Boston University. He is not your typical economist and has a knack for taking complex data, extracting what is important, and providing unique insights and tangible guidance on real estate markets. So with that, I bring you Ingo and his insights on the economy. Thanks very much, Carolyn. Our goal every month is to look at the latest economic numbers and see what they mean for real estate. Usually economic numbers are pretty straightforward. They tell us something about economic activity, how people make and spend money. But right now they're telling us even more about our own behavior, how we've reacted to the evolution of the pandemic. And this in turn can help us get a better strategic look at the future than by just plugging numbers into a computer. We can read this story best from the job situation. This chart shows the change in total US jobs from the same month of the previous year, starting in mid 2019. Before the pandemic, jobs grew at a fairly steady 1.5% rate. With the beginning of the pandemic in early 2020, a huge drop in jobs occurred as many businesses shut down for what they hoped would be a short time until the virus could be brought under control. But the virus spread anyway, and some of those jobs returned in the next few months as the economic consequences of longer shutdowns became clear. With the virus still in charge, the risk of infection was balanced against the risk of lost jobs. There's a limit to the return of jobs though because the pandemic is still here. And that limit seems to be around 6%, a loss of 10 million jobs. No matter if governments permit businesses to reopen, a lot of people just aren't willing to go to stores, restaurants, gyms, or their doctor. What does all of this mean? First, that the economy will not recover until the pandemic is under control. If the balancing point had been the loss of just a million jobs, which is still a lot, we could imagine economic activity resuming alongside the virus, much as people used to live alongside tuberculosis or polio. But 10 million jobs are too many, politically and financially. Second, the pandemic will last well into next year. It's clear that we are not able to follow public health measures, even as vaccines become available. So the virus will remain a threat throughout the country and could even become more dangerous as mutations occur. And third, this will be bad for real estate. The longer the pandemic lasts, the more people will see their finances get worse, whether they're renters or homeowners. And it's not just the 10 million people who lost their jobs. It's also their landlords, bankers, supermarkets, anywhere they used to spend money. Six months ago, it seemed that mainly the renter market would be affected but the surge of infections over the holidays makes it clear that the pandemic will continue so long that everybody's finances will suffer. That's the story I see from the numbers. Now let's have a quick look at the various sectors of the economy. In manufacturing, the same limit to the recovery of jobs is what we're seeing. There's been some improvement in retail but considering the poor situation before the pandemic, it's clear that this sector will not provide more jobs in the future. In business services, fortunately, one of the largest parts of the economy, the slow improvement continues, but it's slow. Even in finance, where jobs have been affected the least by the pandemic, there's been a limit to the recovery. And now we get to the more troubling sectors where a permanent loss of jobs is likely. In healthcare, which is also a very large sector, things are getting worse. People are not visiting their doctor or dentists and hospitals are facing large financial losses. At restaurants, the situation has again become worse. This sector is most affected by mandated shutdowns. We're probably seeing some of that right now, but it also has the largest pandemic problem because people just won't go to restaurants until the pandemic is over. 
and finally in government, the situation is again getting worse. Local governments can't borrow money to meet their payrolls and can't force teachers back into schools. That's it. The story is still evolving. Right now, it looks like a very drawn out recovery is ahead. To finish, let me plug our investors metro analysis, which shows the economic situation in any of 200 metro areas and what that means for local investing, especially for rental properties. It now includes detailed rent and home price data for local zip codes and is especially useful for investors in uncertain times. Thanks for following along. This is our national economic outlook. I'm Ingo Windsor.